In a world where both the human world and the demon world exist, our hero Staz is a vampire who has a keen interest in the human world. However, his life changes dramatically with the entry of a human girl. A story begins in the human world, where Staz the vampire differs from others with his interest in the human world. He likes comics, books, and playing games like humans, but has never been to the human world. Staz is also the boss of a territory as the demon world is divided into several territories, each led by an appointed leader. Sometime later, we see Staz's subordinates calling him about a problem. They capture a girl, but she's human. Upon hearing human, Staz's ears perk up, and he orders his subordinates to bring her to him. Learning about the human girl, Staz is visibly excited. This would be his first meeting with her, so he starts to get ready. However, his subordinates arrive at his door and leave the girl in the room before exiting. Seeing the girl, Staz is surprised and starts gathering information about the human world by talking to her. Meanwhile, Unbeknownst to him, something else was unfolding outside. A man from another territory had attacked Staz's subordinates. He was ready to wreak havoc everywhere, just to meet Staz. Staz's subordinates, seeing the situation worsening, call him while he's deeply engaged in conversation with the girl. Upon learning about the fight from his subordinates, Staz shows no interest and instead hangs up the phone to continue talking to the girl. We learn that the girl's name is Fuyui, and she's unaware of how she ended up in the demon world. Fuyumi, not wanting Staz to leave his friends for her sake, urges him to go outside. Inspired by her words and already smitten with her, Staz doesn't want to ignore her request. Still, he breaks through the window and flies out into the open. He lands impressively in front of everyone, showcasing Staz's attitude for the first time as he slowly approaches his attacker. However, in the midst of all this, Staz overlooks a plant monster that has entered his room. Unaware of this development, Staz continues to advance towards his enemy. He then learns that this enemy has come to defeat him in order to replace him as the leader. Yes, in the demon world, there's a rule that if someone defeats a territory's leader, they get the opportunity to become the new leader. Staz, intent on preventing this, advances to kill his attacker. Despite the attacker's full strength, Staz, being the main character of our story, easily overpowers and eliminates him. After this, Staz returns to his room, hoping to spend some time alone with Fiume. However, what he finds there is shocking for both him and the audience. Upon entering the room, Staz discovers a large plant monster that has apparently digested Fuyumi. It seems Fuyumi's chapter in the story ends before it even fully begins. But then a twist occurs. Staz notices Fuyumi next to the plant monster, but she is now without her clothes. Staz senses something is off with this Fuyumi, she doesn't seem the same. Moments earlier, he was excited and happy about her, but seeing Fuyumi in this avatar changes his mind. Then Staz's subordinate reveals that Fuyumi has actually died, and what he sees is only her ghost. In the demon world, it's common for the ghosts of deceased humans to appear, looking exactly like real humans. We see Fuyumi, now a ghost, distressed by her new form. While Staz resolves to restore her to human form, Fuyumi recalls how she arrived in the demon world from the human world. She leads Staz to a large portal, the very one she used to enter the demon world. Staz, who had only dreamed of visiting the human world, now sees an opportunity to fulfill this dream. He prepares to leave everything behind to enter the human world, eager to discover what it contains that the demon world lacks. Ready to embark on their journey, Staz and Fiume first meet with two of Staz's friends at a pub-like place. Staz shares his plan to restore Fiume to normalcy by visiting the human world. His friend, however, reveals that this journey isn't safe for either of them. Staz cannot stay in the human world for long and Fuyumi, already dead, cannot return to her normal life. Despite the risks, Staz is determined to seize this opportunity. He's even ready to relinquish his position as leader, a decision that isn't ideal for his people. Due to Staz's insistence, his people face difficulties, but they find someone who can shapeshift and take Staz's place in his absence. This individual can easily assume Staz's form. Staz and Fuyuma eventually reach the portal, and Staz's excitement is evident. After a short while, they enter the human world together, teleporting directly into Fuyuma's room. Not wanting to spend his day in the room, Staz decides to go with Fuyumi to her school. However, as they are about to leave, they encounter Fuyumi's father. Upset at his daughter's disappearance for the past two days, his anger escalates upon seeing Staz. He demands to know who Staz is and what he's doing there. Staz, in response, pulls out a spray bottle and sprays its contents on Fuyumi's father. Suddenly, the father's demeanor changes. He becomes silent and then surprisingly happy to see them together. It's as if he's known Staz for years. Later, Staz reveals that he used his saliva in the spray, which has the power to bring anyone under his control. He had used this spray to influence Fuyumi's father. As they travel by train, Staz is thrilled by the sights and sounds of the world around him. 
It's his first time experiencing so many new things and he's visibly amazed. Staz uses the spray on anyone who seems suspicious of him, thereby gaining their support. This tactic continues as they reach the school. Before anyone can react or question them, Staz sprays them, making everyone familiar with him and preventing any objections. However, this situation doesn't sit well with Fuyumi. She notices that even her friends have forgotten that she was missing from school the day before, unable to recall the incident. Although Staz did this for Fuyumi's benefit, it only makes her feel more distressed. She was saddened by the thought that after this moment, her friends wouldn't remember anything about her. She shares this concern with Staz, but he doesn't show much interest. Then, he notices that Fuyumi is beginning to fade away. Staz isn't too surprised by this. He knows that if a demon and a ghost lose their will to live, they gradually start to disappear in the human world. Fuyuma soon realizes her mistake, but by then, it's quite late. Unable to watch her disappear, Staz offers a solution to temporarily fix her condition. He draws his blood and offers it to Fuyumi. He explains that if she wishes to live again, she must drink his blood, which would temporarily restore her. With no other option, Fuyumi drinks his blood. Fuyumi recovers, but Staz starts feeling odd from staying too long in the human world. He wants to return to the demon world to recharge himself. Afterward, they reach Fuyumi's room, where they encounter a sorcerer named Bella. Upon encountering the unknown person, Bella, Staz, and Fuyumi engage in a conversation and learn that Bella was the one who brought the black portal with her powers. Now, Bella demands compensation from Fuyumi for using the portal, threatening to harm her if she doesn't pay. Staz steps in to save Fuyumi, admitting he doesn't have money but offering to do something else in exchange. Bella agrees and assigns him a task. If Staz can steal a specific item from a place she names, she won't harm them. However, this task proves troublesome for Staz. He has to use a portal to travel to a different location, where he must confront a demon owner to steal some items. Staz discovers that his objective is to steal a panty. The item is in front of him, but it's not easily accessible. To obtain it, Staz has to engage in a fight with the store owner. We see Staz skillfully blocking all the owner's attacks, effectively handling the battle. At the end of the fight, as expected, Staz emerges victorious and retrieves the panty, returning it to Bella. Bella realizes that Staz is even more powerful than she had anticipated. Having fulfilled her demand, she releases Fuyumi. During this time, Bella learns that Fuyumi is suffering from a strange illness where she can't stay visible for long and has also become a demon. Bella reveals two important pieces of information to Staz. First, she didn't place the black portal at Fuyumi's house. Someone else had stolen her portal, leading to the current situation. Secondly, she mentions a book that could potentially turn Fuyumi back into a human. However, the book is currently in the possession of the Western side's leader. It is actually a good friend of Staz, making it easier for him to obtain the book. This revelation about the book is a significant breakthrough for Staz, who has been eager to cure Fuyumi. The book could simplify this task. Staz then uses his fastest mode of transportation to quickly enter the demon world. During this journey, he also brings along Mimijiru to keep him informed and watchful over various places. Meanwhile, Bella keeps a close watch on Staz from afar. She observes his every decision and step, curious about the extent of his strength. Simultaneously, Mimijiru, keeping a vigilant eye, spots Wolf and alerts Staz. Wolf, curious about who has entered his territory, prepares to confront the intruder. However, his anger subsides when he realizes the visitor is his friend Staz. They then discuss the book. Staz asks Wolf about the book, piquing Wolf's curiosity about why Staz needs it. Before Staz can explain, Wolf reveals that he has already sold the book to someone else, and it would take time to find it. Wolf offers to help Staz find the book, but on one condition. They must fight, and if Staz loses, Fuyumi will go to Wolf. If Staz wins, Wolf will assist in searching for the book. Though the deal seems unfair, Staz isn't concerned and agrees to the battle. We see them preparing for a boxing match. As Wolf's eyes land on Fuyumi, his determination intensifies. Indeed, it turns out that Wolf has also fallen in love with Fuyumi and is prepared to fight anyone to win her over including our hero, Staz. The boxing match begins, and we see Wolf attacking Staz with full vigor. Initially, it seems like Wolf might defeat Staz. However, as the fight progresses, Wolf's condition starts deteriorating. Exhausted from attacking Staz, he takes a moment to rest. Staz, seizing the opportunity, decides to strike Wolf with all his might. We also learned that before the match began, Staz had bitten Wolf, which is why Wolf quickly weakens. Gradually, Staz gains the upper hand, eventually overpowering Wolf and throwing him into the air. But their fight isn't over yet. We see Wolf suddenly transforming into his wolf form. During this transformation, he asks Staz why he's going through all this trouble. Wolf was unaware that Staz's actions were all to turn Fuyumi back into a human. 
When he learns this, his reaction is unexpected, he becomes angry with Staz. Wolf is upset because for many years, Staz hadn't helped any demon. Seeing Staz now making an effort for Fuyumi, Wolf feels even more enraged and transforms into his true wolf form, preparing to attack Staz with full power. On the other hand, Staz, frustrated by Wolf's behavior, wants to end the fight quickly. Just as the final confrontation is about to escalate, Fuyumi intervenes, stopping them from attacking each other. She doesn't want the two friends to harm each other. Fuyumi's emotional reaction brings Bella to the scene. Using her powers, Bella teleports them to a different location. There she reveals that she has the resurrection book and hands it over to Staz. Bella had been using the book to gather information about Staz's powers. Now Staz tries to understand the resurrection process from the book, but his hopes are quickly dashed. Before reading the book, I discover it's coded and the code must be solved to read it. Everyone tries to crack the code, but no one succeeds. Eventually, Staz decides to speak directly with the book's owner. Upon reaching the page with information about the owner, Staz is shocked to learn that the owner is none other than his older brother, Brad D. Blood. Brad is currently in Acropolis, a city where only the elite families of the demon world reside. This revelation implies that Staz, like his brother, belongs to an elite family and has access to Acropolis. Bella is seen attempting to use teleportation to reach Acropolis. However, in a fit of anger, Wolf pushes Staz into the teleportation portal. Instead of arriving in Acropolis, Staz ends up at Bella's house. The teleportation was initiated prematurely by Wolf's push. This turn of events works out well for Bella, who has been waiting for this moment. Staz lands directly in her room, where Bella begins to playfully tease him. We then see Wolf reverting to his human form in Fuyumi, alongside her cat, listening to Wolf's story about his royal bloodline origins. He shares how he was expelled for not being of pure blood, which moves Fuyumi to tears. Back to Staz, after freshening up, he enters Bella's room, where she tries to seduce him. During their conversation, Bella reveals Staz's past, what she learned through the book. She mentions the time when Staz was living in Acropolis with his brother, Mark D. Blood. Mark had done something that drastically changed Staz's life. He shot Staz with a gun, sealing his powers. Since then, Staz could only use his limited power. Now Staz wants to unlock his full power, which only his brother can do. He also seeks to learn how the Resurrection Book can help Fuyumi. Meanwhile, Wolf and Fuyumi are at a restaurant where Fuyumi suddenly starts to fade away. Shocked, Wolf decides to take her to the best doctor in the demon world, Dr. Frankenstein. Staz, on the other hand, reaches the boundaries of Acropolis and attempts to sneak in. He had been banished from Acropolis, making his entry forbidden. As he stealthily moves around, a demon spots and captures him. Surprisingly, this demon turns out to be Staz's sister. Liz is angry with Staz for running away from home. We learn that her name is Liz, and Staz is somewhat surprised to see her. Meanwhile, Wolf has reached Dr. Frankenstein with Fuyumi. Frankenstein initially refuses to treat Fuyumi after examining her. This angers Wolf, who grabs Frankenstein by the collar and demands he help Fuyumi. Under duress, Frankenstein gives Fuyumi some medicine that temporarily prevents her from disappearing. However, Fuyumi is still not fully cured. Frankenstein reveals that if Wolf dares to fight a monster he created named Akimu, he will assist in fully treating Fuyumi. Akimu, a powerful creature made from human and demon bodies, is on a rampage to conquer the demon world. Back with Liz, she is not pleased with Staz's arrival. She immediately challenges him to a fight. The siblings begin their battle with Liz inflicting injuries on Staz using her relentless attacks. We learn that Liz is actually a guard of the Acropolis city, which gives her the authority to easily send Staz to prison. She uses her power to cast a judgment on Staz, trapping him in a prison world. Staz finds himself locked in a cell, facing significant challenges in getting out. Two zombie guards arrive to fight Staz. He is taken out of the cell to confront them. The fight ensues and the zombie brothers, utilizing their skills, nearly defeat Staz, highlighting his current weakness compared to them. Then Brad enters the battleground, accompanied by Lisa. Staz is happy to see his brother, as he has been waiting for this face-to-face -face conversation. Brad starts talking directly to Staz, with Liz also present. Liz is displeased to see Brad giving more importance to Staz than to her, which further fuels her anger towards Staz. She prepares to fight Staz herself. In the next scene, we see her attacking Staz, but he easily blocks all her attacks. Staz manages to defeat her in the fight, forcing her to step back. Brad reveals that he knows all about human resurrection and is willing to help Staz, but there's a condition Staz must fulfill first. Brad explains that he sealed Staz's powers by shooting him not to control or harm him, but to limit his growing powers. Without this intervention, Staz could have faced serious problems in the future. Misunderstanding this as a harmful act, Staz had left Brad and Acropolis. 
Now Brad is ready to move past these old issues and help Staz, but he sets a condition. Staz must first defeat Akimu, the monster created by Frankenstein. Akimu has become a threat to the entire demon city, causing destruction everywhere. Staz, eager to save Fuyumi's life, agrees to Brad's condition. Brad then removes the bullets he had implanted in Staz, restoring Staz's full powers. As Staz heads back to the demon world to confront Akimu, we see Wolf has already encountered Akimu. Their battle begins, but it's not going to be easy for Wolf. Akimu possesses unique powers, posing a significant challenge to Wolf. We witness Akimu defending himself with magical powers as Wolf attacks. Akimu then opens a portal and starts attacking Wolf through it, using his powers effectively against him. Wolf manages to grab Akimu's arm and breaks it with full force, but surprisingly, this doesn't affect Akimu. It's revealed that Akimu can bend and break his body parts without any significant harm to himself. Wolf's anger reaches its peak, and he decides to transform into his full werewolf form, intensifying the battle. Akimu seems even more excited by the challenge, anticipating an even more thrilling fight. Meanwhile, Bella, who has been suspicious of Frankenstein, takes him to a portal for a private conversation. Frankenstein is confused about what information Bella seeks from him. Bella then reveals that she has been keeping an eye on him for a long time and has even inspected his room, where she found extensive research on Akimu. Bella demands to know about the research on Akimu, threatening Frankenstein with death and disposal if he doesn't comply. Meanwhile, Staz, following his brother's instruction, sets out to defeat Akimu but soon finds himself lost. After much effort, he manages to find his way in the demon world and continues his journey. Back in the ongoing battle between Wolf and Akimu, they are evenly matched and fiercely competing. Wolf, using his power, manages to push Akimu back and prepares to strike him with his claws. However, at this moment, Staz arrives on the scene. He notices that Wolf is gradually reverting to his normal form, due to the time limitation werewolves have in maintaining their transformed state, and Wolf is nearing his limit. On the other hand, Bella, after speaking with Frankenstein, returns to Fuyume and then uses her portal to reach the location of the three-way fight between Staz, Wolf, and Akimu. Staz realizes that Wolf is approaching his transformation limit and suggests he step back to observe the fight. But Wolf, eager to prove himself, continues to attack Akimu, using the last of his werewolf form's time. Meanwhile, Akimu launches a counterattack, unaware that Staz has unlocked his full power. Staz's newfound strength astonishes everyone, leaving them puzzled about the source of his immense power. In the midst of this, Akimu attempts to strike Staz, but Staz counters with a powerful punch, sending Akimu flying back. Staz then approaches Akimu, preparing for the real fight. We see Staz getting ready to use his most special power before engaging in combat with Akimu, signaling the start of a crucial and intense battle. Staz was about to execute his Kamehameha move, but Akimu intercepts and blocks the attack. Mockingly, Akimu comments that it was Staz's worst move yet. Staz, not taking kindly to the mockery, prepares to use his own special power move to permanently end Akimu. As the fight escalates to the next level, we see Akimu readying himself to transform into his full form. He splits his chest into two parts, revealing a monster within that he plans to use to attack Staz. Meanwhile, Brad is secretly observing Staz's fight, assessing how strong Staz has become. His comments hint that he might be planning to use Staz's strength for some purpose, and Lisa overhears this. In the midst of their fight, we see that Staz has managed to gain the upper hand, as he is now holding Akimu's head. This proves that Staz is indeed stronger than Akimu, showcasing his formidable power. Staz prepares for his final move, a powerful blast, seemingly finishing off Akimu. Everyone believes that Staz has defeated Akimu. However, the story takes an unexpected turn. Bella arrives at the scene amidst the fight and teleports Akimu away to his secret location where Frankenstein is waiting. She shows Frankenstein Akimu's body and reveals the reason behind her actions. Bella wants to understand how both she and Akimu possess such extraordinary superpowers. Frankenstein explains the difficulties he faced while initially creating Akimu. One day, someone named Santa Claus knocked on his door and left a gift. When Frankenstein opened it, he found a body with powers similar to Akimu's, which later became the core of Akimu's being. This revelation adds a mysterious twist to the nature and origin of Akimu's powers. While Frankenstein and Bella were discussing, Brad and Lisa arrive at the scene. They decide to imprison Frankenstein and Bella for creating Akimu and for their efforts to save him. Frankenstein pleads for some time, revealing he promised to cure a girl, but Brad disregards his plea and detains him. On the other side, even though Staz has emerged victorious, his battles aren't over yet. Wolf appears, seemingly ready to settle scores with Staz. However, their confrontation takes a nostalgic turn as they reminisce about their childhood. 
Wolf recalls how Staz, as a young boy, left Acropolis and came to the demon world, where he first met Wolf. Despite initial misunderstandings, they became good friends. Remembering these moments, Wolf decides to leave the battleground but promises Staz that they will fight again soon. This moment highlights the deep bond and unresolved tensions between the two. After Wolf departs, Brad and Lisa arrive and Staz learns they came with Bella's help. Seizing the opportunity, Bella escapes from the scene. Brad then decides to fulfill his promise by examining Fuyumi's body to help her. Staz brings Brad and Lisa to where Fuyumi is. After examining her, Brad gives Fuyumi a special medicine to keep her permanently visible for a while. However, Brad also expresses his desire to take Fuyumi with him to study her magical form further. Staz, unsure about Brad's intentions, decides to take him to the Third Eye for confirmation, ensuring that Brad isn't deceiving him. They teleport to the Third Eye's location, where Staz's suspicions are alleviated. Brad then starts gathering information about Fuyumi's soul. Once his examination is complete, he prepares to take Fuyumi with him for further study. This development suggests that Brad's intentions might be more complex than they initially appeared. Before leaving with Fuyumi, Brad's intentions become apparent. He plans to use her magical powers for his own evil purposes. Successfully deceiving Staz, Brad leaves Lisa behind with the task of distracting Staz and diverting his attention away from Brad's actions. Lisa, aware of Brad's malevolent plans, reluctantly agrees to follow his instructions. Consequently, Staz becomes entangled in Brad's manipulative scheme. He finds himself arguing with his sister Liz, wasting valuable time and momentarily forgetting about Fuyumi. Eventually, Staz realizes his mistake and sends his friends to search for Fuyuma. Feeling guilty and concerned for her safety, Staz is troubled by her absence. Liza, unable to keep Staz in the dark any longer, reveals Brad's plan to him, explaining how Brad sent her to distract Staz while he exploited Fuyumi's powers for his own gain. Liza shares with Staz all she knows about Brad's plans and expresses her desire to help rescue Fuyumi, and then strategize their next steps. Liza decides to go to Acropolis to gather information about Fuyumi and Brad, while Staz, along with his friends, plans to search for the man he recently learned about. Liza sets off for Acropolis. Upon arrival at the gates, she is initially stopped, needing permission to proceed. Shortly after, a girl named Barrow arrives and grants Liza access, even offering to take her to Brad. As the two girls travel together, they engage in conversation. Liza reveals her concerns about her brother Brad being involved in evil deeds. Brad had plans to overthrow his father, who is currently managing Acropolis. Barrow doesn't find Liza's suspicions about Brad surprising, as she herself had noticed his questionable behavior over the past few days. Realizing the gravity of the situation and aligning with Liza's intent, Barrow joins her in the search for Brad. Meanwhile, Brad is seen in a room with Frankenstein, engaging in some suspicious activities with Akimu's body. The true purpose of Brad's actions remains a mystery to be revealed as the story unfolds. Soon, Brad becomes aware that Lisa and Barrow suspect him and are searching for him. Sensing the danger, he halts his activities and conceals everything just in time. When Barrow and Lisa enter his room, Brad tries to appear innocent, hoping to mislead them with his words. However, his attempt to divert their suspicions fails because Barrow possesses a unique, magical power that allows her to discern Brad's true intentions. Staz, along with his friends, is gathering information about Fuyumi's kidnapper. They encounter a snowman-like individual and inquire about the kidnapper. Although they don't get much specific information about the kidnapper, the snowman provides a crucial lead about a person named Nell, who possesses superdimensional powers and might be connected to Fuyumi. The scene shifts to Nell, who is unaware of Fuyumi, and leads a simple life with small jobs. However, his routine is interrupted when he suddenly encounters a ghost girl with a bell. She rings the bell, revealing Nell's location to everyone around. In the following scene, Bell catches up with Nell, using her teleportation powers in an attempt to capture him. However, Nell proves to be clever and manages to evade capture each time. Eventually, after escaping Bell's teleportation power, Bell lands a kick on Nell, knocking him out momentarily. When Nell recovers, Bell interrogates him about who he is working for. Nell is confused by this question as he has been independently doing small jobs, not working for anyone in particular. It's revealed that Nell is actually Bell's brother and possesses his own set of powers. In response to Bell's questions, Nell mentions his plan to use Fuyumi to summon Hydra Mom, but the details of this entity are not yet clear. Their conversation is interrupted when Staz arrives. Pleased to find Nell, he tells Bell to step aside so he can handle the situation. Staz approaches Nell, intending to finish him off, but Bell intervenes. Staz tries to dissuade Bell from interfering, and when she doesn't back down, he forcibly moves her aside. In the ensuing confrontation, Staz prepares to fight Nell with full intensity. However, Bell, standing behind them, has other plans. 
Using her teleportation power, she creates a small portal, and just as Staz is about to attack Nell, she places the portal on Nell, sending him to another location. Staz is angered by Belle's interference and turns his rage towards her. The two face off and a fight ensues. Underestimating Belle proves to be a significant mistake for Staz. Belle has the upper hand due to her powers, consistently using her portals to overpower Staz. She eventually wounds Staz and forces him to the ground. The humiliation of being bested by Belle further fuels Staz's anger. Seizing an opportunity, Staz successfully traps Bella, teaching her a lesson. Bella teleports herself into a small cube for safety, but in her haste, she leaves her clothes outside. Staz takes advantage of the situation by taking her clothes, leaving Bella unable to come out without them. Despite her requests for her clothes back, Staz refuses. Realizing her defeat in this fight, Bella eventually works alongside Staz again, who then returns her clothes. Together, without further delay, they set off in search of Nell, knowing he went to find Hydramon. They head towards Hydramon's lair. Meanwhile, we see Brad troubled by memories of his father, Father Wolf. These memories indicate a strained relationship between Brad and his father. Staz and Bella eventually reach the vicinity of Hydra home. Yumi, already present in Hydra home, encounters Bella and Staz there, bringing relief to Staz. Meanwhile, Brad meets with his father, who inquires about a person similar to Akimu but who had disappeared some time ago. Brad reveals to his father that Akimu and the missing person are one and the same, indicating that he has assimilated Akimu into his ranks. Brad also declares his intention to claim the throne, even if it means fighting his father, effectively initiating a confrontation. To execute his plan, Brad decides to leave, but he is intercepted by Barrow and Lisa. Barrow tries to stop Brad using her powers, but Brad, countering with his own powers, kills her. Brad attempts to leave, but is stopped by Goyle, who arrives with his monster. Goyle refuses to let Brad go without a fight, leading to a confrontation between them. On another front, Fuyumi discovers that Bella is her sister. This revelation comes from the realization that they both share the same mother, one from the demon world and the other from the human world, making them doppelgangers of each other. This fact became evident to Fuyumi when she earlier saw a demon who resembled her father, indicating her and Bella's connection as sisters. Meanwhile, Goyle corners Brad, leaving him no choice but to engage in battle. Brad, finding himself trapped, is forced to confront Goyle directly. Goyle, using his powers, relentlessly attacks Brad, who in turn tries to counter with his ability to manipulate Goyle's blood. This leads to an intense fight between them. Simultaneously, Staz experiences a strange sensation related to Fuyumi's body, something he can't quite understand. During this confusion, Staz is suddenly teleported to a different world. Puzzled about his whereabouts and how he got there, Staz tries to make sense of the situation. In this new environment, Staz encounters Hydra Head, who appears unexpectedly. Hydra Head is there to understand Staz's true intentions regarding Fuyumi. It's revealed that Hydra Head was a close friend of Fuyumi's father and respected him greatly, leading to his concern for Fuyumi's well-being. Hydra Head questions Staz about his feelings and plans for Fuyumi. Staz finds himself at a loss for words, unsure of how to articulate his feelings or intentions regarding Fuyumi. Hydra Head, unhappy with Staz's uncertainty, forcefully urges him to be truthful. Eventually, Staz confesses his own confusion regarding his feelings for Fuyumi. Simultaneously, Bella poses similar questions to Fuyumi. Like Staz, Fuyumi is also unsure about her feelings towards him. Pleased with Staz's candor, Hydra Head then returns him to the real world. We then return to Brad, who is encased in ice due to Goyle's abilities. Brad manages to break free using his own powers and fully empowered, begins to fiercely attack Goyle. The confrontation between Brad and Goyle reaches its peak, with Brad's situation appearing dire. At this crucial moment, Lisa intervenes in their fight aiming to assist Staz and evacuate him from the location, which she successfully does. Meanwhile, Staz regains consciousness and finds himself next to Fuyumi. Hydra Head, having understood Staz's good intentions, releases them, allowing both to return together.